Hello students, probably uh, this is the first time uh, we will be interacting uh, with in a different way rather. A new session, new class, new and probably of course new experience. For the first time we will be interacting but there will be definitely an interface not directly but an indirect manner we will be interacting among us and we will carry on with our classes like that way all right so let's begin i welcome you to this new session and this new session the new experience of course all right so let's get started i'll start with the first chapter of your book there I'll, uh, if you go th through your book or if, rather i don't know how many of you have got the book um, you will be noticing that on uh, in the entire book there really there is or there are at least or rather almost nine chapters the first eight chapters are basically based on topics individual topics are there chapters covered and the ninth chapter is of experiments that means practical chemistry as of the syllabus i'll start with the first chapter that's chapter one as you can see it's language of chemistry this language of chemistry you have already rather learned about this chapter in the previous class if i'm not wrong if you can remember the previous class and probably most probably the fifth chapter of your book was language of chemistry and what we read over there we read over there the basic terminologies and of course many others the first we read about atoms we read about molecules we read about, about atomicity we read about, read about formulas symbols equations and why we need to balance balancing of equations we should balance an equation reaction rather all the reaction needs to be balanced and why reactions symbols of elements compounds the molecular formulas and so many stuff so what now i'm going to do is so you can ask me that that uh, what is the, the difference that your class eight is also having that uh, so class eight is also having the same chapter order we read about class nine is also having the, yes i told you on the previous that, that as we we will grow up with as rather from one class to the next class as you will go up the content will change that means from a chapter of two pages so rather a chapter of five pages will become a chapter of 10 pages followed by 30 50 60 and so on as you grow up so the content the quality of information it will vary so the same thing over here some extras are there so the first i'll just go go rather do a very fast revision right i'll do it just do a very fast revision of what we did in class eight it's, it will be a recapitulation for you all so it will be it will be helpful apart from that i'll the more the portion which is new which has been introduced and you will be doing that one as a new thing in class nine that is those part i'll stress on so without wasting so let's get started so let's carry on so the first the, those terms the first we are we read about atoms and we know that atoms are the smallest particle of an element or retaining all the properties of that element electrically neutral and um, it is um, uh, probably as per the dalton's concept if you go for a rather during that time he just he said that it was indivisible in nature atoms cannot be divided anymore and those stuff and of course, we are. We always we know that whenever we are going to write a definition, we should. Though, what you can, what you are noticing over here, it's not the exact. It's not the. What should I say? A definition for the examination. I'm just giving you an over. I'm just giving you a highlight. Well, those are basically written as points. Now, examples are must. Coming to molecules, molecules are made up of 
they are made up of atoms, right? As you can see, that molecules I've mentioned, I've written that molecules are made up of atoms, and they are the smallest particles of a, of an element. No, no, of course not. Atoms, molecules are the smallest particle of a compound, right? And it will molecules bear. They are the smallest particle of a compound bearing the properties. The they retain the properties of the compound exactly the properties of the compound all right and molecules are also electrically neutral and examples are of course must coming to the next term is atomicity you may have you you may remember this term or may you may have forgotten this term or you may also say sorry we haven't we didn't read this one previously no problem atomicity the basic definition it goes like the number of atoms it's a very very simple and I'll request you and as the class is going on and as the class is going on what I'm what I'm what I normally say books inside just listen to what I'm saying very carefully try to understand and I don't think it will be very very difficult for you to understand it all right so atomicity just simple number of atoms one molecule number of atoms present that's it any element we will consider how many atoms present in that element or rather in the molecule of the element that's all a simple thing how many atoms present that's all if I if I move on and how many atoms present it can be one it can be two it can be three four and so on based on the number of atoms present the there are the terms are given the classification has been done how monoatomic diatomic triatomic tetraatomic polyatomic so monoatomic means atomicity is one so sodium calcium atomicity is one diatomic that means two atoms are there in the molecule of that element two atoms are there so diatomic atomicity two and triatomic atomicity three phosphorus atomicity four and sulfur Atomicity H is a polyatomic, atomicity 4, tetraatomic, polyatomic molecules, right? Polyatomic, tetraatomic, pentatomic. So, in, in, in some places, you may also see that after triatomic, they classify straight away into polyatomic. Some cases, you may also find that after tetraatomic, the rest, they have, been, they have been classified under one banner, one, one heading as polyatomic. All right? The next terms will go I'll go for ions ions they are atoms with electrical charge charge it can be electrical charge atoms atoms of elements right atoms of elements or it can be atoms of one element one type of atom or it can be two types of atoms right it can be one type of atom it can be two types of atoms coupled together two three atoms together you're making up one single ion so ions are uh, atoms or molecules with a charge atoms or molecules with a charge what type of charge positive and negative simple positive and negative simple positive charge cations and negative charge anions coming to the next radical so similar to ions similar to ions group of species they're also also having the same electrical charge they're also having the same electrical charge have a, and categorized as basic radicals which are the positively charged ions and the acid radicals which are the negatively charged ions as you can see in the example it's any plus it's a positive charge ion so it's a cation ca2 plus cation al3 plus cation fe3 plus it can it's it's a cation fe2 plus cation zn2 plus cation and what about the anions? Cl minus anion, O2 minus anion, S2 minus anion, Br minus anion. So all these negatively charged species, and the list is there, a big list is there, so call an anion. Okay? I hope it's clear now. I'm just going for a recapitulation. And coming to the next term that's called the symbols. A very very important thing and in 
chemistry are well aware that symbols are very important because symbols do speak a lot because every reaction is basically we do not write a reaction in words do we write a reaction in words in each and every place do we write a reaction as words no we do not write a reaction in words we write reaction in symbols we write reaction in terms of we are using symbols why because word english word written english words if you write as if like that way so when words reactions we cannot balance that one so for balancing a reaction we have to write this compulsory that we have to write in terms of symbols all right the symbols are basically short representation of an element or or any other compound or any other conditions it's a symbolical right okay a very important term we discussed that one in the previous class that if and if you remember there was a list given in the chapter five that which are monovalence valency and simple definition the combining capacity of an element and but a prefer but another definition a slightly uh what should i say um uh, a bit more clearer and a bit higher a, a bit for senior students that uh, the number of electrons donated accepted or shared by an atom of an element to attain inert gas configuration for stability the number of electrons donated accepted or shared by an atom of an element to attain inert gas configuration over there I written in earth gas configuration but or there I, mi I, I missed one point that is to attain the nearest inert gas configuration this is very important nearest do not miss this word the number of electrons donated accepted or shared by an atom of an element to attain the nearest inert gas nearest inert gas configuration for stability and of course examples must and examples once again given under the classification heading times monovalent divalent bivalent to divalent trivalent tetravalent so if you remember the previous um the chapter five of the pre previous book of the class over there you will find that uh, if you remember there was a list given I told you there was a list given with a bivalent it's a monovalent of the list of ions given with or other elements given with well, what are the valencies there was a, a bivalent section the monovalent section the tetravalent section there's a valency list given over there right so and if not given Definitely this time if not given if you think if, if you say it was not given over there. No problem this time in your book this book class 9 book You will be see you will be finding You'll find that the list is given as in terms of valency a beautiful table is given in chapter 1 That is in terms of valency the classification has been made monovalent ions and bivalent ions or rather in terms of cations also monovalent cations bivalent cations trivalent cations like that way monovalent anions bivalent anions trivalent anions so like this with tetravalent anions tetravalent anions so all these things for example carbide is a tetravalent trivalent phosphide nitride p3 minus is a trivalent anion rather. carbide c4 minus tetravalent anion so like this way there is a list given in your book and just beside that one just if you from the on one side it's given the valencies and on the just on the opposite side that rather not on the opposite uh, just beside that ta table or the list a list of formulas given a big list of formulas given and i'll definitely and expect rather as an expectation you have to practice those formulas that's very very important those formulas are very important you have to practice as much as you can 
is a big list of formulas calcium carbonate calcium nitrate calcium sulfate potassium sulfate potassium chloride potassium nitrate potassium carbonate calcium sodium carbonate sodium and there's a big list ferric ferrocyanide potassium ferrocyanide potassium arsenate zinc carbonate zinc sulfate aluminium sulfate aluminium phosphate it's a big list almost of 100 from you for or rather more if i'm not probably more than 100 formulas that they were there given so don't panic, nothing to worry, so time is there, Although a lot of time, ample time you're having, so practice those formulas, all right? Okay. Now, with the valency, we're also having the variable valency. Variable valency, if you remember, that means valencies or elements which are having multiple valencies, that is more than one. You read about in the previous class, probably if I'm not wrong, you read about only iron and copper. Ferrous and ferric, ferrous, valency two, ferric, valency three, and copper, cuprous and cupric, valency one and two. Remember one thing, that lower valencies, variable valencies when you're discussing, the lower valencies are termed, or uh, rather the, that suffix us is added for us, and when that uh, higher valencies we are talking about, we are discussing or we are considering the ik, the suffix, not the prefix, the suffix ik, ice, -E, if you just match that. Ferrous 2 and ferric 3, higher valency. Cuprous, us 2, uh, sorry, 1, and cupric, it's 2. So, us, it, it, it's plumbus, it's 2, and plumbic, for so lower valence is us higher valence is ik tin stannus sn2 plus the valence the symbol is sn2 plus but what is the valency it's two the symbol of stannus is sn plus two and what about stannic sn plus four but what about the valency stannus is two and the valence and the stannic the valency is four only four the plus neither mind formulas we already discussed previously but formulas there are two categories of formula what is a formula basically a formula is a symbolical representation of a compound symbolical representation of a compound we are having there we discuss our symbols and using those symbols we are, we, are, we will write certain formulas of compounds and, or rather substances and the chemical composition and the representation of those are basically what's called the formulas, right? Okay, example, glucose symbol, or we, 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 we are familiar with this glucose. We, every, most of the time, and rather in the summertime, we have this glucose, right? Glucon D, right? All the TV ads, glucon D, glucose D, and blah, 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 so many things are there. So uh, those uh, Sachin ads, Virat Kohli ads, and so many types of things. So this glucose, it's C six H two O C, and you have also read this glucose in biology, if you remember photosynthesis, right? Really? Okay. So <clears throat> coming to the next, that is molecular formula. Molecular formula, the it's a symbolic representation of a molecule. There are two types of formulas. One called the molecular formula. Another one, a new term, now it's called the empirical formula. This term in the previous class, you didn't read. But this term, empirical formula, you're coming across this term for the first time in class nine. The new one. Molecular formula is a symbolic representation of a molecule of a compound with actual number of atoms present. That means in the molecular formula, the actual number of atoms what's present in that particular substance that will be mentioned. But what's the difference between empirical formula? What's empirical formula? Empirical formula is basically the simplest formula of a compound, which gives the simplest ratio of atoms in whole numbers. The simplest formula. That means this empirical formula will give us the information that which atoms are present in a particular compound which other atoms are present in a compound in what ratio they are present that information they will give us what information what 
but rather in which ratio they are present. But they will not give us the information how many atoms are present in that compound. So for this reason, empirical formula of many substances can be same and hence for this reason only it becomes difficult to identify what is the actual substance is okay let's give an example if you'll notice the example of the first is C6H12O6 if you see C6H12O6 how to derive how to derive empirical formula look can you see any numerical, any integer common over there? Common integer? Yes, 6. If you see C6, H12, 12 is a multiple of 6 and 6 is there. So if I divide that into all the integers by 6, what I will get? CH2O. This is... Now, can we divide more into the lower numbers? No. Because what the empirical formula says, the atoms will be expressed in the, the in the lowest possible whole number ratios. So one, two, one. We cannot divide it anymore. And hence, empirical formula C6 H2O6 is CH2O. Right? H2C2O4. What's the common? Two. So it's HCO2. So one, one, two. C6H12, what's the empirical formula? CH, both divided by 6, common term, 6, CH. C2H2, what's this? Acetylene. Empirical formula, CH. So if you notice that C6H, C6H6, with that's benzene, and C2H2, both these two are having a common empirical formula. So will it be, will that be feasible? Will that be enough to understand by a particular person that with the, if I write CH only, will you be able to understand that which compound I'm actually specifying, whether it's acetylene or whether it's C6H12O6, oh, sorry, whether it's C6H6 benzene, whether it's C2H2 or whether it's C6H6. So for this reason, empirical formula became obsolete. B286, the common is 2 to so BH3. But what about NaCl ionic compounds? NaCl ionic compounds. If you notice one sodium, one chlorine, what will be reduced? We cannot go lower than one or whole numbers. We cannot, what to divide? So the empirical formula and the molecular formula, same. CaCl2, empirical formula, molecular formula, same. One and two chlorine. We cannot divide it anymore. No common, nothing. We cannot divide it anymore. And hence, CaCl2. Nitric acid, HNO3. What are nitric acid? The same thing goes over there. The same thing. As if, that is HNO3. One hydrogen, one nitrogen, and three oxygen atoms. So nothing is common. So HNO3, molecular formula, and the empirical formula are the same. Chemical equation. We read about over there that symbolical representation of, of, a, of a chemical reaction and stating which includes the symbols and the reaction conditions and the reactants and the products. Examples are there. Once again, I repeated balanced reactions are must. Reactions should be balanced, and for that reason, it has been highlighted in a separate way. And I've written, I've shown over there that I've written also that one reaction is not balanced, so that is wrong. Zinc plus nitric acid, zinc nitric plus hydrogen, this reaction is not balanced, and such reactions are totally wrong. Reactions should be balanced, otherwise it violates the law of conservation of mass. Okay? Limitations are there that reactions, from the, what limitations are reactions we're having? Reaction do not give a rate of that rate of a reaction. That means how speed, how fast a reaction is going on. No information are mentioned. From a general chemical reaction, such informations are, 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 are do not give such information. Time required. How much time it will take? No, no information. Sorry, no information. The next about no information about the concentration and the, of the reactants and the products. No such information given. 
Now, coming to the important section, that is the new part that is relative molecular mass. What is relative molecular mass? Before understanding, yeah, we need to understand, or you need to understand, you need to understand one thing, that's what is relative atomic mass. In the, in the previous, we discussed about atomic numbers, one to 20, right? It starts with hydrogen, hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, up till, it goes up till calcium. So for the first 20 elements, I repeat once again, or it will be a reminder, or rather recapitulation to you that hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, and calcium. So now, for the first 20 elements, atomic numbers are familiar. You also need to learn now the mass numbers. I told you in the previous class that mass numbers are also important. And I, I know many of the many of you have also learned those well, learned those mass numbers also. And once again, once again, you have to, once again, you once again you have to uh, memorize the mass numbers. Now those mass numbers which you have or studied rather, or you will find those mass numbers are basically relative atomic mass why relative means with reference to something and what is the reference those mass numbers are basically calculated or experimental done with respect to that means atomic mass of hydrogen is one and it's definitely atomic masses are having the unit of atomic mass unit nothing else Atomic mass unit, relative atomic mass is having the unit of atomic mass unit. And you know, units are compulsory. You have to give the unit. Okay? Units are compulsory. Whenever you're doing the calculations of relative molecular mass or relative atom atomic mass, is nothing to calculate. But whenever you're writing this one, you cannot write only. When you are writing, what is the mass number? When this term mass number, if you write the mass number of hydrogen is 1, or if sodium is 23, or fluorine is 19, accept it. But once you are re replacing this mass number by the term relative atomic mass, you have to write 1 amu. For helium, 4 amu. Sodium, 23 amu. So, all these, this unit is very, very important. Okay? Now, those relative atomic masses are basically, what's the, why the relative? Because those masses have been, with reference to carbon. One to a large, you can see that it is basically those atomic masses have been calculated with reference to carbon atom. And the definition of molecular mass, relative molecular mass, also what it what, what it says that it represents how many times one molecule of the substance is heavier than one twelfth of the total mass of carbon twelve. That means carbon. What's the mass number of carbon? It's twelve. So one twelfth. I'll divide. If I if we, if we divide carbon atom one to twelve parts with reference to one part of that 12 part that 1 by 12 one part of the carbon atom with reference to this how much heavier or lighter this atomic mass is okay sorry this atom is for example the relative relative molecular mass relative molecular mass of sodium Relative molecular mass of sodium, it's 23 amu. Am I right? Yes. Now you may ask, sir, how the why sodium sodium is so it, it, it's, there is no molecule. Sodium with metals, the molecule and the atoms, the representation is the same. The molecule one, the molecule of sodium, we write any do we write any two? Do we write any three? No. We write any any. From, we, we write only Ca, calcium, with potassium K, with zinc, it's Zn, with um, copper Cu. We write with metals only the symbols. And that is the molecule itself. That is the molecule, that's that. Same thing. For that reason, the relative molecular mass of sodium, 
23 amine that means one in that's it that is the way because only one atom that's the molecule that's the atom relative molecular mass of hydrogen molecular mass hydrogen non-metal they exist as molecules by pairing up with another atom so hydrogen it's a atomicity what how do we write h2 we write h2 so 2 amine but the relative atomic mass of hydrogen it's 1 amine oxygen we write o2 so 2 into 16 that makes 32 amine now coming to compounds coming to compounds how do we calculate the relative molecular mass of compounds? It's very, very simple. Nothing we have to do. We just have to add it up. Suppose we know the formulas. The formulas will be given. And if not, we have to know the formulas of compounds. Okay? For example, we, are, we will consider NaCl. What's the atomic? We just have to add up the atomic masses. And that's all. We'll give you, we'll give us the result. How? Let's consider a simple molecule, NaCl. What's the atomic mass of Na? 23 Amin. Cl, 35.5. Just add up. 23 plus 35.5 Amin. It's giving 58.5 Amin. HNO3. How many hydrogen, how many atoms? First, figure out that one. Hydrogen, one. Nitrogen, one. How many oxygens are there? Three. So, one hydrogen atom weighs how much? One Amin. One nitrogen atom was a relative atomic mass, 14 amu. One atom of or one atom of oxygen was a relative atomic mass, 16 amu. So if one weighs 16 amu, three oxygens are there. How much it will be? So three multiplied by 16, and what the result? 63 amu. H2O. How many hydrogens are there? How many hydrogens are there? Two. How many oxygens are there? Six one so two multiplied by one hydrogen the atomic mass of hydrogen is one so two multiplied by one will give us two plus sixteen eighteen amu. Let's make slightly a bit let, let's um uh, going to a bit a uh, slight complex things relative molecular mass of hydrated calcium sulfate CaSO four dot two H two this is what's the What's the common name? Gypsum salt. Remember this. The common name of CaSO4 to 2H2 is gypsum salt. And the same thing, this 2H2O becomes half H2O, then it becomes plaster of Paris. CaSO4 to half H2, the common name is plaster of Paris. And CaSO4 to 2H2, the common name is gypsum salt. Now, what is the molecule, the atomic mass of Calcium 40 amu, it's already given over there. We can see the sulfur is 32 amu, oxygen 16 amu, and hydrogen 1 amu. How many calcium atoms are there? One. So 40 plus. How many sulfur atoms are there? One. 32 amu. You can see amu outside bracket. So 32 amu. How many oxygen atoms after that? After sulfur, how many oxygen atoms written? Four. After calcium, sulfur, how many oxygen atoms you can see? Four oxygen atoms. So four, so four multiply by sixteen, and that gives four into sixteen. Now this two dot, there's a dot given. Don't bother about the dot. Once again, plus. Now two H two O. So two multiply within within brackets. How many hydrogens? Two. So one into two. Atomic mass of hydrogen is one plus oxygen how many how much 16 so that gives 172 amu it's basically 2h2 is actually 2 multiply by the molecular mass of h2o and in the previous if you remember in the previous if you remember was the atomic mass of one molecule of water was the relative molecular mass 18 so 2h2o will be 2 multiply by 18 simple so it's 172 in a similar way h 2 is 207 this is basically <coughs> called oleum oh, this is oleum compound now in a similar way you can calculate two hydrogens two sulfur 
solid phase 32 mu. 7 oxygen, so 7 into 16, the, R, the RMM is 178 mu. In a similar way, copper sulfate 5 h 2 the copper atomic mass 63, and the rest, you know, sulfur is 32, oxygen 16, hydrogen 1. And if we place accordingly, over here, 5 h 2 that means 5 multiplied by the molecular mass of one molecular mass of one molecule of water. So 5 multiplied by 18 you can see once again 2 plus 16 2 into 1 plus 16 that gives that makes 18 so 5 multiplied by 18 that is 249 now a very important thing to that is called a percentage calculation composition calculation that means if for example over here we are facing h2s2o7 or copper sulfate 5h2o or caso for the 2h2o if the question is about what percentage of sulfur is present in CaSO4 the 2H2? What percentage of sulfur is present in oleum or H2S2O7? How we can what, what how we can say that what percentage is present? So what's the formula? The total weight, or you can better to write total mass of the element, the total mass or total weight of the element in one molecule divided by the molecular mass of the compound in one molecule the weight of the element in one molecule of what one molecule of the compound that means that particular element whose particular element whose composition whose percentage com percentage composition needs to be calculated that particular element how much present in that compound first that needs to be calculated that one should be divided by the total mass of the compound and multiply by 100. Okay, let's do an example. It will be more clear to understand. What percentage of sulfur is present in calcium sulfate dot 2H2? Total amount of sulfur, how many sulfur atoms present? One. So what's the atomic mass? 32 mu, right? What's the molecular mass? Previously, we calculated 172 mu. So 32 by 172 into 118.60. What percentage of water present in CaSO4? How many water molecules present? Two. Two. One water molecule mass is how much? 18. So two water molecules will be how much? 36 mu. Very good. Molecular mass of CaSO4 the 2H2 is how much? 172. So 36 by 172 into 100. So very, very tough, sir. Is it very tough? I don't think so. Let's consider ammonium sulfate. You can see the form. Well, the question is what percentage of nitrogen is present? What percentage of nitrogen is present in ammonium sulfate? So what's the first we need to calculate the relative molecular mass of ammonium sulfate? We calculated how much is that? 132 mu. Now, how many atoms of nitrogen present? Two atoms. If one atom of nitrogen mass is 14 mu, two atoms will be 28 mu. So, percentage of nitrogen equals 28 by 132 multiplied by 100. And as I've written, and we got the result 21.21%. And it's a very, very important thing. I have written that one in bold letters. Do write to two decimal places. After decimal, after the decimal point here has to be two decimal places. You have to write, do not round it off to the merest uh, whole numbers. Do not do it. If it is coming 21.21, two decimal places minimum, 21.21%, you will write exactly. Do not write 21, nearly 21%. Nearly 20%, nearly 40%. Avoid this term merely. You don't have to go for nearly. Whatever it's coming after decimal place, write those figures. No problem at all. Okay. And I hope it's uh, pretty clear enough. So I've given you some 
homework to do. Practice this. Uh, you know, numericals, the practice problems are given over here. Uh, I'll definitely carry on with this calculations and numericals in my very in the next lecture also so that we can discuss more about these numericals more about these problems and it, this numerical becomes much more easier compared or rather to you all right okay so with this I'll and practice this in your copies whatever you're having and just keep a record of that so that whenever um, we will be facing each other rather when the school reopens you can submit those things all right with this i will stop over here for today thank you so stay at home and take a very good care of yourself thank you so much